from Force 13 HQ and from our contributors from around the world. This is June the 5th, 2018. Hello, it's June 5th. We're into the fifth day of the Atlantic hurricane season, but it's not the Atlantic that we're looking at today. We have one cyclone active and three invests now, and they're all in the Pacific Ocean in various parts of it. Let's take a look at what's going on right now. First of all, the Eastern Pacific now has two areas of interest. Invis 91E, which formed in the last 24 hours, now has a 90% chance of development in the next five days, and I think it was a 30% chance in the next 48 hours uh, the last time I saw it. Uh, it's pretty obvious that it's going to become a tropical cyclone in the near future at some point, and will be the first named storm. That area of interest behind it as well, 20% chance in the next five days. Uh, the models, I believe, at least one of them is uh, pretty keen on that developing as well uh, and that could be a very significant storm too either of them could be actually um, as time goes on so that's the eastern pacific right now just getting all my tabs together here uh, let's go and take a look at the western pacific and this is what we have right now tropical depression 5w still struggling terribly to try and get to tropical storm status and then you've got the two other invests and this is a remarkably interesting scenario that we've got because it appears that we don't know what's going to happen with those invests. Um, there is one outlier of a model which I'll show you a little bit later on, but we expect at the minute that not much is going to, or we, we don't, really don't know. Uh, it's quite likely that those two invests will merge later on, and that has confused the models quite a bit. TD5W is going to struggle, could get to weak tropical storm state as it's been on the JTWC forecast pretty much since it formed. Uh, but the West Pacific is really struggling to get out of first gear at the minute. Nothing else elsewhere at this time. Let's take a look at the latest satellite views. Here's the Eastern Pacific right now. It goes west, uh, showing us the latest imagery over the last seven hours or so. Uh, very little going on in this part of the ocean, but sooner or later, about five days time maybe, on the right hand side of this image you'll see a potent tropical cyclone uh, begin to march towards the west-northwest. Uh, possibly a hurricane by then, we'll show you on the models shortly. Here's the Atlantic, uh, looking very quiet. Uh, you can see a few thunderstorms there over the continent of South America. Uh, that is where the tropical waves would form if it was all ocean, um, but obviously that line will move further north as the season progresses. At this time of year you're really looking out for Alberto-like storms, I suppose. Systems that get themselves together through um, all of that unsettled weather that usually finds itself perching over the Western Caribbean Sea, or sometimes frontal systems further towards the northeast of the east coast of the US. As you can see, uh, nothing matching the description of either right now. And just off the left-hand side of the image there, you might be able to see the edge of 91E. Here's the Western Pacific. Uh, well, Tropical Depression 5W is there somewhere. It looks like a band of thunderstorms, really. Really looking very poor. And the invests. Uh, 90W has always been pretty clear to note. It's the one that's by the Philippines. It's causing a little bit of flooding, especially on Mindanao at this time. I don't know whether that's caused any uh, significant problems, uh, but I do I do hear that there have been flooding issues. And then you've got 91W, which is over towards the right-hand side. Uh, the JTWC had that at high chance, um, although it really has lost its composure in the last few frames of this sat rather clunky satellite imagery, um, which is of Goes's issue. Um, not goes, but the uh, Noah floaters, that is. Um, and as you can see, very little going on with 91W just yet, uh, but we'll wait and see. High chance going to JTWC, one of these systems may well end up forming, or maybe two will become one and something will happen in the mid-latitudes. Uh, either way, both of these systems will be heading in a northerly direction, and it may well deliver some storm force winds to Japanese coastlines, whether it's tropical or extratropical by then, who knows. What else have we got? There's Australia, and there's the Indian Ocean. All looking pretty quiet at this time. 
Uh, and the floaters themselves, here they are, so you can see all three of those uh, West Pacific systems up close as well. Um, so 5W there on the left hand side, convection blowing up in those latest frames just south of Hainan Island in China. Uh, they'll be, be receiving significant rainfall as will the coast of Vietnam and eventually into mainland China as well. And then the two other invests there, um, which it looks to me as though they are getting pretty close together. Um, as a matter of fact, they're closing at a rate of knots by the looks of things on that imagery. So you may well see some push come to shove in the next 24 hours and maybe emerging or maybe one of those low pressure centers will just dissipate and, and the other one will take over. Uh, it's quite an interesting situation that we've got there right now. Okay, then let's uh, now take a look at the sea surface temperatures. This is what they look like right now. In the Western Pacific, you can see the sea surface temperatures there around 30 degrees for all three of those systems. Just about getting into the 30 zone for 91W. Um, so they've really had very little excuse to not do a little bit better than they have been doing, but that's obviously good news for those land areas. No tropical storms have resulted from these three invests, and uh, there was a, a period of time where it looked like at least two of them, possibly all three, would have become named storms, but we're looking like maybe lucky to get one. Um, but 91E is also in warm waters, around 30 degrees or so, and that will continue for around three, four, maybe five days, depends on its movement speed. Uh, still, 26 degrees is the general threshold, and that will survive for 91E uh, for about five or six days minimum. Okay then, let's see if we can get the forecast up. Hopefully there aren't any difficulties with this. Press play, and let's see what we've got in the Atlantic over the next five to, five to seven days. Um, very little as you can see, a few frontal systems moving off extratropical cyclones over in the Atlant North Atlantic, but in the Caribbean area there, it will get a bit more breezy throughout the week by the looks of things, towards the end, uh, into the weekend, uh, but really nothing of tropical nature uh, is on the forecast over the next seven days there, and you just about see uh, what's behind 91E forming there at the very end. Here's the Eastern Pacific, watch the right hand side of your screen as 91E becomes apparent. There it is I think, yep, developing into a tropical cyclone, uh, quite a broad one actually by the looks of things, and eventually something around its system there, and then becoming a hurricane there. Uh, possibly category 2, possibly category 3 in that image there, as it moves off towards the west and then northwest. This is according to the latest GFS model run. Um, and holding out as a hurricane for a little while as it moves out to sea harmlessly. Here's the West Pack. You can see Hainan on the left hand side and 5W not becoming a tropical storm and then it's circulation making landfall in China just west of Macau. Uh, and then you see this absolute mess that develops at the end of the week. This is the result of Invest 90 and 91W trying its very best to form but it just looks like a complete mess there. And then possibly another system moving through the Philippines behind that, uh, coming into next week and then out towards the northeast. Uh, as I say, very messy scenario, very uncertain forecast. The North Indian Ocean uh, is also looking uh, pretty quiet, uh, very little going on here. Um, there will be an increase of precipitation off the western coast of India by the end of this week, um, but tropical cyclone formation doesn't look likely at all but those winds getting up over the open waters as we enter the weekend in both sub basins I suppose you could call them the Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea but nothing like Mekunu is anywhere near uh, anytime soon wonderful well let's take a look now at whatever's coming next and uh, we can't actually show the wind shear at this time because the wind shear graphic is down at the minute so let's go and take a look at the computer models this is what the HWRF is saying <laughs> now I may have piqued your interest 5W's there on the left barely becoming a tropical storm though actually it does say 60 uh, 60 miles an hour 52 knots uh, so I don't know where the HWRF gets that burst of intensification from wait to see if that happens uh, but regards 90W, HWRF is calling for 91W to merge with 90W very soon 
and then 90W, or whichever one it is, going off as a tropical storm, very broad because they've both merged together, huge really, and then becoming category 2 according to the HWRF, maybe even category 3, but the, at the minute HWRF is out on its own as a rank outlier, and uh, pretty much of an outlier for um, its, um, its location as well taking it pretty further west, pretty much further west than uh, any of the other models at this time. Uh, indeed, to the point where it will affect the, uh, uh, the Ryukyu Islands of Japan. The RAL models, uh, these are two that I've picked out, uh, 5W. You can see the discrepancy in the uh, model tracks there. There could be some stalling going on around Hainan, around the coast of China, wherever it stalls. There will be a lot of rain, which will no doubt lead to flooding issues, uh, so we don't want that. And over there, 91E on the right-hand side, the model forecast there, in, in pretty tight-knit agreement, as you would expect for an East Pacific storm. They're usually very easy to predict. Um, in general, not always, but it's the typical um, textbook moving out to sea, west-northwest, East Pacific storm that we'll be seeing out of 91E even though the GFS hinted that it would make landfall in Mexico two nights ago, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And just a quick look at the RAM diagnostics there as well for 5W. Um, wind shear is an issue according to the um, system right now. Around 25 knots, maybe even getting up to 30. Uh, that will taper off by the looks of things very soon, uh, in the next 24 hours. Uh, so we'll wait and see whether that will have an impact on whether this system will attain tropical storm intensity or whether land interaction now will get in the way. Uh, that leaves 2018 to date. I haven't changed this graphic since the last update because nothing new has happened, but that is how we're looking in terms of where we are today or recently and what the forecast is, what we're heading towards. We do anticipate that this year in the West Pacific will be busier than any of the last three um, and will also beat the average by two storms. We're expecting 29. And on this day, in 1890, a cyclone made landfall in northern Oman with hurricane force winds. That is a storm that Force 13 discovered, or at least partially. Um, indeed, some of the track was known, uh, but we actually found details of the landfall, which uh, obviously details being sketchy at the time only that it had hurricane force winds and it was most likely tropical. In 1986, subtropical storm Andrew formed in the Bahamas. In 1995, tropical storm Allison made landfall in Florida as a 70 mile an hour tropical storm. Six years later, the other Allison formed and made landfall in Texas and became one of the wettest storms in Texas uh, until another one came along a few years later, you may be able to guess. And in 2007, Cyclone Gonu um, came off its Category 5 peak, which happened the previous day, and battered the coast of Oman as a Category 3 uh, storm. Made a very brief landfall before moving just back out, paralleling the coast then as it moved towards the northwest. Well, that's all for now. Now let's take a look at Force 13's outlets. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com. You can also find our YouTube page, search Force 13, subscribe if you haven't. You can also find our Facebook page under the same name, and we're also on Twitter. It's at Force 13 if you'd like to get in touch or follow our page there. This week, Force 13 also launched a new Patreon page if you'd like to consider helping the project out, supporting it, uh, as it goes even bigger and better, as Alex Zaragoza and Hank Dolce has done so far, please consider it. Take a look at the page. All contributions are invested straight back into the project. You can also add Force 13 on Skype and my personal account, Fool13 at extension 9094 on Discord for Tropical Weather Chat.